We're here at the European Banking Association Day in the Rai, where all the European banks are together. And I'm talking to uh, Mark Hartley, you're uh, from clear to pay yep. and you're doing innovation. I want to talk to you about the blockchain. 200 billion they spend here on ICT. Is the blockchain even an issue for these old banks with all their old systems? It is an issue and they're all looking at it, at it seriously. The blockchain is often uh, confused with Bitcoin. A lot of them were looking at the, the currency of Bitcoin. Now they're actually looking at what the blockchain itself, the technology of the blockchain, blockchain can give to them in the area specifically of correspondent cross-border cross-currency transactions. Okay, hooray. They know the difference between Bitcoin and blockchain. Congratulations, Bank. Now, what do they think it will fix? What, why, why are they playing with blockchain? Well, a technology which five years ago was a, was a paper, was just a paper and was just a bunch of people who are programming it uh, free of charge. Yeah. I'm sure you, like me, have tried to move money cross-border. You've seen how long it takes, how much it costs. If you actually look at the number of parties that are involved in that chain, what the blockchain does is allow the sending party to deal directly with the receiving party. So you remove all of that friction inertia and therefore cost out of the system. And one very important thing for a bank is if they have lots of correspondent relationships like they do today, they are required to hold liquidity in lots of different places. The model like Ripple is pu putting forward is somebody else provides that liquidity, which means that they can free up some of their money to do something else. So Ripple has been uh, named a lot of times during these two days. Ripple is sort of uh, an, a private blockchain uh, yeah. uh, site yeah, yeah. which they can use and they can control the security of the nodes uh, who is yeah. basically connected to it. How, how popular is Ripple? Well, I think in the banking community, it's, it's, it's more popular than some of the other providers because it sort of leverages this same concept of a party of trust, whereas the, the blockchain itself, of course, is a completely decentralized trust model. There are other companies that are being looked at, a company called Epiphyte, a company called Ethereum, who are building Turing complete languages on top of the blockchain. By that, what I mean is they're building a, an application programming language to look at things like smart contracts. So if your fridge breaks down, it'll be able to look whether there's a warranty on the fridge, whether the warranty is valid, where they can get the repair from, and the payment will happen under the, under the, the, un, under the system of the blockchain. So there are other systems that are being looked at, but the reason Ripple is so popular is because it's nearer to the current model than perhaps some of the pure blockchain providers. So the blockchain is just another way to pr provide cross-cultural, cross-national uh, uh, payments. Is it, is it just a cheaper way to do it or does it have other advantages? It's real time. So, I mean, if, again, if you've been to, uh, if you've sent cross-border, cross-currency payments, you know it goes into a black hole yeah. and it takes how long? We don't know. It depends which method it's gone through. So definitely speed will be an advantage of using something like the blockchain but we're on the we're only at the right at the beginning of the blockchain there's going to be so many different applications of the blockchain payments is just one obvious place to start absolutely it's so amazing that we were talking about the digital revolution i go like hey this has been going on for 25 years and they're talking about real time as is it something uh, new i'm at it's really a problem, all these old back office systems which are 40 years old and which are batch oriented. It's still a big amount of luggage. Yep, absolutely it is. And that's one of the biggest challenges that a bank faces is that and in a survey that we've recently done, 77% of them have said that they're an impediment to their innovation is their core banking system. That's what the banks are reporting about their own uh, system. No, but that, we have Swift. They were, you know, they, they've been around for a while. They're making a real-time payment system in uh, in Australia. Yeah. Wouldn't they be a more a natural candidate to provide this kind of service? Personal view is that one of the things that happened out of the financial crisis is is a big issue of trust. And what I think you see in the blockchain model is we're now decentralizing trust. And that decentralization of trust is a very important aspect for customers. In the model that we have with central banking and indeed with with organizations like Swift is we have to trust that entity. And the theory of the blockchain is that that trust is now dissipated across all the players, which has to be, in, in any event, mathematically a more secure solution. But Mark, last year, Bitcoin was popular. Now they think like, oh, well, Bitcoin, it, the value went down, so it doesn't mean anything anymore. Now popular, the blockchain is popular. Will next year, will the blockchain be gone and something else will come up? I've no doubt that we are in an age where change is 
is an absolute constant and change happens more frequently than we the human race can educate ourselves. I can't tell you what will be around the corner but there is going to be something that comes around. Oh, I thought the answer was blockchain is going to be much more a stayer in the, in the world game but anyway. Hey, clear to pay you provide payment providers so you connect to all kinds of different payment methods all over the globe. Yep. What would you do with blockchain? How would that basically influence your business? We're already working with some of our customers to actually create a closed loop using the Ripple protocol to actually see and investigate how we can move money cross-border, cross-currency using the Ripple capability uh, as an investigative or proof of concept, if you like, to see if that's something that our customers would be interested in. Because I presume that your system is real-time, right? I mean, yes, absolutely. But you, you work with systems which are not real-time. Absolutely, yes. Our system is real-time and we do work with systems that aren't real-time. Next year, around this time, where are we then? Well, you can interview me again and I hope I'll be able to tell you about a successful proof of concept with several customers using Ripple as a protocol. Yeah. So in, it will take three years before it will be a service which we, we as a business uh, or as a uh, consumer will use? There are lots of hurdles to get over. Don't underestimate the necessity for it to be properly regulated and make sure that we don't fall foul of KYC, AML, all the things. Yeah. And let's not forget the other comment you made about banks' core systems. By definition, they are old, they are, and IT projects with banks are long and hard and tough. So I can't promise you that you will have a radical new infrastructure in three years, but in five to ten years, I'd be surprised if we don't. Okay. So this was the European Banking Association Day. Blockchain is the name of the game at the moment. We'll see where it goes next year. If you want to know more, come to the BitcoinConference.nl on the June the 24th in uh, ING headquarters.